Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Keista Bilberry. I am coming to you with the word of God and praying for you and just want to explain the scripture that we will be coming to talk about, which is Mark 8, verse the 34th through the 37th. And again, the scripture that we will be talking to you about is Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through 37. And I just wanted to explain to you guys how important it is to have a personal relationship with the Father. We know that time is of the essence and Jesus Christ is going to come. I, don't, I can't express it enough to let you know that God is soon to come and we need to be prepared at all times. I mean, we every single day when we wake up, we see how beautiful the sky is. God always sends us um, he always sends us six signs in the sky, the moon, the stars, and the sun itself. And uh, they, I just have nothing but peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. And I just want to tell you guys, God loves you. And of course, I am sitting outside on my front porch and um, just wanted to sp spend this time with you guys. And of course, um, of course, it's very windy, so my hair is blowing everywhere, but I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, I just think it's very important to talk about God and how important it is to spend time with Him. Uh, but we're going to begin with a quick prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and go into the scripture. And uh, again, my videos will be at least 30 minutes short. Um, but let's just go ahead and get started. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive our debt as we forgive our debt to her. Forgive those who trespass and trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, the glory. Uh, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We are praying, seeking your face, seeking your voice, Lord Jesus, seeking your Holy Spirit, God. Whatever it is, that you need us to hear to wake up to Lord Jesus let your will be done through you Lord Jesus let your will be done in us oh God whatever whatever the will that you have for our for our lives in at this moment let it be done in the mighty name of Jesus Father God those who are on here looking at this video I pray a blessing on their lives father god that they will spend more time with you and less in this world father god have your way in the name of jesus we love you god with our whole heart mind body and soul in jesus and we pray amen amen i am truly honored and, and thankful to be out here to tell you how good god is and god is so awesome he is wonderful and you know we have to to see the reward of God on a daily I mean he woke you up you know you got breath in your nostrils you got breath in your lungs you got breath in your body that was not given to us by ourselves it was given from God to us to see another beautiful day and I just love every minute every hour um, to sit here and to just base in the glory of God. God deserves the highest praise. After all what he has done for us and what he is still doing for us, God loves you so much. Um, and again, if I didn't in introduce myself, again, my name is Dr. Keista Bilberry, and this is a time where we all should come together, spend this time with God more than anything, because if I'm not mistaken, the COVID pandemic really showed us what we do on a daily basis, right? When we all were isolated in our own homes, can't really do anything. And we had to sit there with our children, with our spouses, with our siblings. And, and, and the, the COVID pandemic really expressed to us that, hey, we've been on the go daily, but not once have we sat down 
to read God's Bible, to read his word and apply it to our life that gives us strength, that gives us energy to be able to do the things that we are that we normally do and to do the things that we are supposed to do for the kingdom of God. And that's how come it's so important for us to to spend time with God. You know, it's so important us to be role models for those who are wishing to be in your position for us, you know, having a relationship with Christ. How do you do it? What to do? You know, you know, if advice like that. So what we're going to do is, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm coming to you with Mark chapter 8, verse 34 through verse 37. And I'm going to put on my glasses here. <laughs> well, these are my reading glasses. <laughs> okay. The way of the cross. The way of the cross, right? Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must de de deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. How many of you guys on a daily that is denying your flesh, denying this world, denying you so you can pick up your cross to follow Jesus? How many of you can actually say, Lord, have your way, Lord. Let it be you, not me, Lord Jesus. Change me, God. Mold me. I want to be more like you and less of me. And that's what God is calling us to do. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I didn't feel like wanting to wear a hat, but I'm good. But the way of the cross is by denying yourself to pick up your cross, to follow Jesus, right? And we're going to continue. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake for and for the gospel will save it. A lot of people are afraid today. You know, a lot of people are afraid to speak up for the truth of the Bible, the truth of Jesus, because they don't want to be an outsider. They don't want to be thought of upon to be, I don't know, um, to be, they want to be somebody that they're not, right? There's no way, when God called you into the gospel of Jesus Christ, he wants you to fall on him. Yes. That means that you will lose your friends. Yes, that means that your reputation of this world will not be what you want it to be. It's okay to be different. It's okay to represent the glory of God. It's okay because in the word of God, you have a lot of scenarios, a lot of events, a lot of stories parable stories in the Bible of when God called the disciples to leave their belongings to come follow him. Don't bring nothing. I got you. That's called stepping out on faith and trusting Jesus with your life. And a lot of people, they don't trust God for what he said that he was going to do for you for your life. There's a lot of people who are, are experiencing hard things in their life that they have no control out of no control at all and if you're experiencing those things you must pray and say god i don't understand god why me god please help me with this i'm having a hard time trying to understand why is certain things happening to me and is it me what did i ever do you know but God want us to come and pray. This world had did so much damage to the lives of the people. It has, it has. Cause see for a minute, they pointed the finger at the church. And that's what the devil did. He pointed the finger at the church and let the church be the forefront, the face that covers the sin of this world so that the children of God can be blamed 
for what is not happening for what it is happening and we must be able to have spirit of discernment and to know that the things of this world it says in the bible you know the enemy he come killed to steal and destroy and he's pointing the finger at god's children because he's turning the world against the christians that's exactly what he's doing you want to know how how faith how faithful you can be with god just imagine yourself like what's going on around this world you know uh uh China, you know, people over there in China, uh, uh, Japan, or Christians around this world who are being put put to the test of their faith. They're being tested to see if they will stand on the word of God. They're getting, they getting, you know, I hate to say it, but they're getting tortured for their faith in Jesus Christ. I, I know personally that Jesus went to go prepare a place for us a place that no one have seen eyes ear have not heard what God has in store for his children but if you really think about it remember how God sent his son Jesus to be in the flesh so that so that he can feel what we feel that, we, that he could see what we see in the flesh. Jesus came in the flesh, you guys. And they didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it. But he knew that the people needed a helper, needed a help from the Lord so they would not be thrown into hell. Okay? So... Are you living your life by denying your flesh and picking up your cross? Are you living your life that represents Jesus and not you? We have a tendency of trying to point fingers when we got a whole bunch of them pointing fingers at ourselves. But God is so good. He is so good. But God is so good. And I I'm truly am thankful to know who Jesus is. Yes. But we're going to continue, okay? Yes, it's very windy out here, but you know what? It's fine with me. It feels really good. Just imagine waking up in, in heaven, just being in heaven, seeing a paradise, just nothing but beauty. I, I'm so excited to see what all God has in store for me and you. Okay, so... You can't be afraid to lose your life when you're doing it for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can't be afraid of it. It says, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Are you not content with what you already have? You got a roof over your head. You got food in your pantry. You got clothes on your back. The things that we so desire is the things that we want, but do we really need it? You know, do we really need what we want? Of course, we want to in, enjoy life. We want to have fun. But do you see what God already is doing in your life? He, he's making a way for you. He's preparing you. He's covering you. He kept you, you know? And sometimes our... Faith has to be tested by the Holy Spirit to see who are you focusing on? Are you focusing on Jesus or are you focusing on the situation that you're in? Jesus loves us. Jesus cares for us. He does. And, you know, as truth be told, um, what happened is, as parents, okay, Jesus give us our children right are you doing your part to to bring them up in Christ or are you doing your part to do what whatever they will to do whatever they want to do because um, there's a difference there's a difference between raising your kids up in Christ 
and then raising them up in this world to be flesh seeking instead of being God pleasing right so let's continue to read this let's continue to read this it says what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. I was telling my children what you're seeking after is temporary. What you want to accomplish is temporary. Especially if it doesn't benefit the kingdom of God. It's not, you know, I'm not talking about going to college, getting a job. But what I am talking about is money. Money and material things that's only temporary. Of course, God, he will allow you to enjoy your life to the fullest truth. But God says that your, your soul is worth more than silver and gold. And you got people out here and uh, you have children out here who are doing the things of this world. But they don't realize that when they die, that they would have to pay for their sins. They would have to pay for their own sins but due to the choices that they had made. Jesus said, what is it for a man to forfeit his soul for riches and fame? It's not worth it. Your soul is worth more than anything. That's the reason why God came into the flesh and he had to suffer in the hands of his people and then he died on the cross. He was resurrected on the third day. And he was back in the spirit form of God, right? We're still here on earth in humankind. We're not in our spirit form yet. But when Jesus comes and the ones that remain and when he takes, up, takes us up out of here, we'll be transformed into the spirit of God. We will no longer be of the flesh. And I love the fact what Jesus is doing. I love the fact that when he came in human form to experience what we're experiencing. Well, guess what? When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now we get to be transformed in, into the spirit form of Jesus. Yes, we get to be like him. He went to go prepare a place for us that is eternal and it's beautiful. Paradise. That's only if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You do not want to die without knowing who Jesus Christ is. No, you don't. See, the devil... Is promising you temporarily stuff. He's promising you riches and material. He's promising you all of this that looks good to the eye of the flesh. He's tempting you because he's very tempted. He's temptation. He is sin. <laughs> Even though we was born into this world, into this sinful world, God has given us a choice. Who will you serve? Will you serve Jesus or will you serve the materialistic of this world? But one thing that the devil is not telling the ones that already sold their soul to the devil, he's not telling them, oh yeah, on the contract it says, you will be damned to hell fire for eternity. 
Oh yeah, he didn't put in the contract for that. Okay, he put in the contract saying that, oh yeah, you sold your soul because you wanted to be rich and famous. Oh yeah, yeah you did, mm -hmm. yeah you did. But one thing he left out on that contract is that you would have to pay for everything that you wanted from the enemy because you wanted something to be quick, quick, quick. Instead of waiting on God to be your provider and to take you from A to Z, God can bless his children. He can bless you. But people are not being still. People are not being transformed by the renewing of their mind. They're not studying the word of God. Everything you need to know is in God. Everything you need to know. And God is sending all his children, the evangelists, the apostles, the, uh, the pastors, the ministry is growing. It's because God is trying to reach you. Don't close your ear off to God. Please don't. Because God, ooh, that, that day where we see Jesus in the sky, and he said, and he got the word from his father, and says, go get your bride. I want to be in that number. How many of you guys want to be in that number? Because I'm going to tell you guys something. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people are saying, oh, there's not a God. Yes, there is. Look at your internal organs. Look at your humanness. Look at you wonderfully and fearfully made from God. God created all of us. Yes, he did. In the image of him. Jesus. Jesus. They, he created us to be more like him. Right? Yeah. I would not. I would be quick to hear and slow to speak. There's a lot of things that you may not understand, but it may not be time for you to understand why. But when the time comes, God will allow you to see for yourself. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but evidence of things not seen. We may not see it, but we know as children of God that Jesus Christ is real. He is real. There's so many people in this world that are question, questioning. But get this. I wouldn't, God doesn't want us to long for the desires of this world. He wants us to spend time with Him. He wants us to love Him and cherish Him. When you put God first, He put His Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit intervened on our behalf. The, 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 the Spirit of God would teach you what to say within an hour. He would teach you what you're supposed to be doing, even though you don't think you're actually doing it, but you're doing it. The word backed up of how you live your life for Christ. And I just want to let you guys know, Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. He does. He loves you all of us and you know while I was I was sitting here and thinking today I was like God these people don't know who you are they don't know who you are because the word world had done them wrong yes and a lot of people are so in their flesh there is a lot of people in the world that know that Jesus is real. But then when they sign that contract, they show, oh crap, I'm sorry. That's what you're saying. Oh, oh my gosh, I, I, I signed the, you know, I signed the contract. Oh my goodness, I had sold my soul, you know. This is what people are doing. And I, I, I even, me and my husband, we, we talk to our children. We let them know. They want to be a, a music singer or whatever. Let it go. <laughs> Just let it go. If you follow Jesus, 
God will bless you. But if you follow the devil, yeah, he'll bless you too. But not the way that you want, want it to be. No, 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 no. You just don't want to go that route. But, but look at this, you guys. As children of God, we cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. When someone comes to you and they want to know who Jesus Christ is, you tell them. You stand on God's word and you tell them, this is what Jesus done for me. This is what Jesus said to me. Because I, I often tell everybody that the only way I can tell you who Jesus Christ is, is through the experiences that I went through. And how do I know Jesus is real? It's because I have a personal relationship with the Father. Jesus loves us. He loves us so much. And that's why I'm like, God, thank you for waking me up. Thank you for allowing me to see my children. Thank you for allowing me to see my mom. Thank you for allowing me to see my dad and my siblings and my friends and my neighbors. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to see how beautiful this day is. And guys, this day is so beautiful. The sky is even that beautiful blue with nice big white clouds. Just beautiful. God loves you. And there's nothing that he will not do for you. He said, ask and it shall be given to you. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and ye shall find. God has so much in store for his children. He does. And that's why he does not want us to be weighted upon the things of this world. He doesn't want us to worry because worrying is a sin. And it can cancel and block your blessings. You don't want to worry. You, God said in his word, you don't have to worry about when, when is your next meal come from, what you should wear, what was going on in your life. He said, bring it to the cross. Say, God, forgive me. Lord, we don't have much food. Lord, um, I don't know what to wear. Lord, no. Give it whatever concerns you, whatever you may be going through. Give it to Jesus Christ. He will meet your needs. God is so good that he will send anyone to bring you food. He will send anyone to speak the word over your life. He will use anyone to represent the kingdom of God just for you to see and to know that Jesus himself is real. The Holy Spirit is living water, you guys. Living water water yes he is he is living water and i just thank you father god i praise you and worship you lord we thank you lord jesus for all what you're doing what you still is doing god lord protect our families protect our homes protect us lord jesus that no weapon formed against us shall prosper god have your way god go before us lord jesus make our path straight god hallelujah jesus thank you father god we love God with all our hearts, our body, and so God, go before us. Make our way straight, Jesus. We love you, Father God. That's why you pick up your cross and you follow Jesus. Forget about this and forget about that. Just know that Jesus, if God is for you, then who can be against you? You know? If, if God is for you, who can be against you? God loves us. And there's nothing that he would not do for you, for his children. He loves us. That's why I'm honored to come out here to talk about the word of God because he is so good. He is so good. Now let's go over these points before I end in this uh, live chat. The way of the first point is is um, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. That's what Jesus said. Take up your cross and follow me. Excuse me, guys. I had something in my eye. <laughs> the second point is whoever wants to save their life will lose it. it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it? And the third point is, 
What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Mm. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Give in exchange for their soul. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous, sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. I'm going to end right there. Father God, have your way on my followers, Lord Jesus. Father God, send blessings upon blessings on their lives, Father God. Have them to establish a real close relationship with you, Father God. Ask them for forgiveness of their sins, God. Lord, let them be in love with you like never before, Lord Jesus. Father God, let them see in the spirit and not in the natural, God. Keep them, Lord Jesus. Keep them, Father God. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit. And um, God is so amazing, you guys. He is so amazing. Just know that God loves you regardless. And and, and just and if you need help saying a repentance prayer, say, Father God, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of the choices that I've made in life. Forgive me, Father God. Lord, let my ways uh, be in you, Father God. Lord, let me pick up my cross and follow you, Jesus. Let me deny my flesh. Father God, forgive me of my sins. Have your way in my life. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me, Father God, with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. And Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus that you would change me and save me. So, and here's another one. It says, you can, you can repeat this after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner against you. You alone have I sinned, and I am sorry. I believe that Jesus came to the earth. He lived sin sinless. He died. He was buried. He rose from the dead because he did that. He paid the price for every bad thing in my life. He, His precious blood washed away my sin. God, I repent and I thank you. You are a good God. I am clean because of the blood of Jesus. Now that I am clean, I boldly proclaim Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, come inside me. Oh, I, I love you, Lord. I thank you that my name is inscribed in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time. God bless.